So guys, Chapter 4 Season 4 is out, and currently I'm trying to figure out what the best meta is in order to win games in this brand new season. After a lot of hard work and over 20 hours straight of games, I think I have learned what the best thing is for Fortnite Competitive, and I think I know how you guys can use it, how you guys can abuse it, and eventually how you guys will benefit and how it will result in you guys winning more games and eventually tournaments. This is going to be Forecast Towers. In today's video, I want to go over exactly how forecast towers are one of the most important things on the map and how they can basically make or break your game. Now be sure to stay till the end in order to get all the information on these brand new items. Let's hop right into this video. All right, to start off, obviously guys, I'm gonna go over some general basics of the forecast towers. So to begin, there's obviously only gonna be six forecast towers on the whole map. Now this is actually quite a lot considering how many major POIs there are on the map and especially on the edge. Now obviously guys, I'm gonna go over all the different forecast towers locations. There's gonna be one in between Shattered Slabs and Frenzy Fields. There's gonna be one near Mega City. There's gonna be one over closer to Slappy Shores, but also still near Mega City. There's gonna be one in between Creaky Compound and Eclipse the State. One in between Brutal Bastion and Shady Stilts, and then one in between Brutal Bastion, Slappy Shores, and Creek Compound. Now, I think these are really good locations because they're not too much on the edge of the map, but they're not too much in the center of the map. I think it's a really fair location for these forecast towers to be. Now, in terms of how these forecast towers work, now basically what's going to happen is when you spawn in and launch in through the battle bus, the forecast towers are already going to be there on the map. However, they don't activate until after the first storm circle has formed. So, essentially, what that means is that you guys are going to be able to land at any POI and you guys can rotate over to them after the first storm circle has formed. Now, after the first storm circle has formed these towers are going to light up and they're going to become green now after that there's going to be a boss with two npc guards that spawns near the tower it can be pretty close to the tower however it can actually get quite far and they're going to chase you pretty far down if you guys do damage them without eliminating them now basically these bosses and npcs are essentially the same as the mythic poi bosses and npcs they have the same amount of health and they're pretty much the same amount of difficulty to fight now what's going to have to happen is you guys eliminate them and then once you eliminate them they're going to drop three things they're going to drop slurp juices they're going to drop mythic weapons and then they're gonna drop a key card. Now, once they drop all these three things, you guys can obviously loot up whatever you want. Obviously, slurp juices are great. I'd recommend you guys have them. And then take the key card and then go over to the forecast tower and swipe it. Now, what this is gonna do, guys, is it's gonna basically give you all of the future zones, pretty much predicting every single zone for the rest of the match. You guys can see why this is absolutely huge. Now, obviously, there have been forecast perks and different NPCs that have the forecast perk. However, this is unlike anything ever before. This thing predicts every single zone after you guys use it. That's why it's so valuable to have this forecast tower. Now guys, obviously this is a massive benefit for competitive. Obviously seeing where the next zone is is one of the most important things in competitive Fortnite to plan your rotations, the people who you're fighting, where you guys are gonna be pathing, where you're gonna be positioning. That stuff is absolutely massive. So these towers are extremely valuable in terms of game sense and overall IGLing. So if you're an IGL on a duo, I definitely recommend you go for them. Now, obviously that's one reason, but the next reason is gonna be the fact that you guys definitely need to go for these forecast towers because they drop slurp juices, mythic weapons. They're a really good place to stack up on loot if you guys don't have the greatest loot from your POI. And then of course, the third reason that I'd recommend you guys go for these towers is simply because the mythic POIs have a lot of forecast towers on route when you guys are rotating from them. So if somebody's rotating in from a mythic POI, they might decide to stop at a forecast tower. Once you guys eliminate the boss before those players get there, you guys can eliminate the players with the mythic weapons and then get all of their very good loot as well. That's a really big benefit for you guys, obviously, if you're gonna be using these forecast towers. Now I wanna move into some strategies on exactly how you guys can go for the forecast towers. Now there's gonna be three primary strategies I would recommend for you guys doing this. Now the first one's gonna be the first player strategy. This is gonna be where you guys land somewhere very close to a forecast tower, any POI that's pretty much adjacent to the forecast tower. And then what you guys can do is loot up. And then once the first storm circle has appeared, you guys can go over to the forecast tower, eliminate the boss, and then get all of the forecast information and everything you need from that place. That's the first immediate strategy. I think that one's really good for players who are a lot more confident in their looting ability, somebody who knows a POI near the forecast tower really well. Now, after that, there's going to be the late strategy. Now, after the late strategy, guys, there's going to be a rotation strategy where you guys are going to be at the forecast tower area. However, if somebody's already pushed the boss and not eliminated them yet, or even if nobody's pushed the boss, however, it's just a later zone. And that's pretty much when you guys are gonna be the first person. However, you're gonna be pushing a little bit later. So maybe zone two or three, depending on where the zone pulls. Now, this isn't really a great strategy unless you guys are confident in your fighting ability, because the later that you push the boss, the more likely other people are to push them as well. Obviously, the boss is very quick to kill because they don't actually have too much health and there's only two guards with them. So if you're a duo, you can pretty much kill the boss in maybe 30 seconds at most. If you're a solo, yes, it is a little bit harder. However, it's still a viable option to go for these forecast towers. And then obviously guys, the third strategy to go for this boss is obviously to push way later in the game when there's pretty much nobody there in this forecast tower, maybe on the edge of zone, maybe it's despawn, whatever it may be. This is when you guys basically push at the last resort, no pun intended. And overall, I think this is probably the worst way to push. The reason I'm still going over it is because it is still a viable option for those of you guys that wanna go for it. Once again, any amount of help to forecast a future 
storm circles is really helpful. But then again, I obviously think the immediate strategy is by far the best. Late strategy is okay. But once again, if you can get it in the first zone, that's great. And once again, guys, keep in mind, the boss is really quick to kill. So obviously these towers are really valuable attributes for competitive Fortnite. This is how you can win free games, basically. You're going to have incredible loot, you're going to have a mythic weapon, and you're going to have really good amount of foresight for the future of the game. Guys, that is the video on the forecast towers. I hope you guys did enjoy. I really think that this is one of the most important aspects of the new season. I think if you guys master forecast towers, you guys can definitely win games. Without a doubt, that's going to be one of the best strategies this season. But that's about it for this video, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.